All right, so a lot of people have been asking uh, for me to talk about this radioactive source that was lost in West Australia. It's a cesium-137 source that's used in iron ore density. So what they do is they have a source and they have like a scintillator on the other side of where they're kind of shooting all this ore through. And so that'll measure like the density and how much ore is coming through there and they can measure the quality of the ore as well. What's really blowing me away is that no one's actually showing a picture of what this thing looks like. They're showing a picture of the source, which is about the size of the tip of this pencil right here. That's about the size of the little metal canister. over an 870 mile stretch of road uh, going from the mining site to Perth in Western Australia. Now that's a huge amount of ground to cover uh, to look for something so small. I mean, at least it's radioactive, so uh, they shouldn't have too much trouble finding it if it is anywhere on the road or near the road. Because if you're driving by and if you have a sensitive enough detector, it will pop up, like they will be able to find it. All right, so to put kind of things in the perspective here. So this is a one microcurie source of cesium-137, has a half-life of 30 years, and is fairly radioactive. Like on my detector right here, let me turn it on really quick so you can hear how active it is. Now right now I have a gamma filter on here, so it'll just be the gamma radiation, which is more than likely counter if they were to see this source laying on the road. And to give you an idea of how radioactive it is, here's the clicker. So you can hear it, you can hear that it's radioactive. It's, it's giving me around 14 microsieverts of gamma radiation exposure on contact. So that's what my hand is getting from holding this source right now. If I have, hold this source in my hand for an hour, I'm getting around 14 microsieverts of exposure to my hand, not to the rest of my body. So that source that they lost is 20 millicuries, so that's 20,000 of these. <laughs> now this is pretty radioactive. The thing is, is that they don't talk about what this thing was actually contained in and how it shook out. And so I did a little research and I found what these uh, sources are usually contained in, and here it is. So as you can see, it's like a, it's either a silver metal or yellow uh, source container and it kind of looks like an end cap to a pipe. And the idea is that this is supposed to be in a place where the source is hitting the receiver, like a scintillator or something along those lines that can actually detect that, that radiation, that, that, that change in radiation to see what the density is. How much uh, <laughs> exposure this is. Uh, let's uh, talk about some of the exposure you get from x-rays. So you have a dental x-ray, which is around five microsieverts of exposure. And then you have a chest x-ray, which is around 100 microsieverts of exposure because it's a much larger area and a much more absorbed dose of radiation is happening all over the body versus just in your mouth from a dental x-ray. And then you have something like a mammogram, which is still very localized to the chest, and that's around 200 microsieverts of exposure. And then you have uh, CT scans, which are around six to almost seven millisieverts of exposure. Now that is pretty large comparatively to all of these other types of uh, radiation exposures from x-rays. And so when they say that this is equivalent to 10 x-rays, like, well, what are you saying? What type of x-ray uh, procedure are you having? Is it a chest x-ray, a dental x-ray, or is it something like a CT scan? Is it like 10 of those? The source in question is very radioactive and it should be handled with care if it does, if someone does come into contact with it. It should be kept far away from you because that's the whole thing with radiation is that when you move away from a source, it drops off dramatically. But if the source is super intense, you holding on to it can do a lot of damage to your hand. There have been incidences like accidents with radioactive sources that were lost and found by someone that picked them up and held onto them and their hand or their leg from when they put it in their pocket was so badly damaged that they had to amputate it. So that's kind of 
to give you an idea of some of of how damaging some of this exposure can be and how this is a serious uh, thing and people should take it seriously. And they say to keep back 16 feet just as a, a, like an overabundance of caution. Uh, if you were close to this thing and you just picked it up for just a quick second, like, whoa, what is this thing, and, and put it down, uh, you probably wouldn't have uh, any considerable damage uh, happen to your hand or to yourself. Uh, it's all about how long you are exposed to objects like this. And that really kind of dictates the dose that you receive or that part of your body receives. You don't want someone to inadvertently find this thing and to be holding onto it because it could really seriously injure somebody. Uh, I don't want to say it could kill them. It probably could given enough time uh, with the source close up to you. Like if you kept it in your shirt pocket or something like that, that could be a real problem because then that source is as close as it's gonna get other than if you ate it. That's probably the worst case scenario. If you put that thing into your mouth and swallowed it, uh, that would kill you. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that that much radiation exposure inside of you would kill you. Uh, it'd probably take a little while, but uh, that type of activity inside of the body, uh, that's, just, that's just too much radiation for the body to handle. Uh, so that's something to think about. So uh, if it's picked up and held on to, you're probably looking at uh, radiation burns and something like that. What would this type of radiation exposure look like? If you were to hold this to your chest, you would get around 2,800 chest x-rays. If each chest x-ray is 100 microsieverts, and this thing is putting out 280,000 microsieverts per hour. That's what it would be. It would be 2,800 chest x-rays. If you were to hold the source that is missing to your chest, that's what you would receive. That is a lot of radiation. So I'm not sure where they're getting their 10 chest x-ray uh, exposure model from because that's just, uh, I mean, maybe if you were to hold it out uh, away from you, you know, like this, and maybe then you'd only get uh, 10 chest x-rays, but your hand would be gone. Uh, they'd probably have to amputate it. But I don't know how many people have uh, ever been to a mining site or to a construction site, but people beat up equipment. People that don't understand what a nuclear gauge is and haven't had the proper training, which it sounds like maybe this guy that was transporting this or this team that was transporting the source from the mining site down to Perth, that they didn't have the proper training uh, to understand what they were dealing with. Because it sounds like this source, like the housing was just rattling around in the back of a truck. And it looks like from the design of this uh, module that it can come apart and that the source could get out, which just seems really weird that it wasn't inside of like a Pelican case locked away, um, you know, whatever. People just not understanding what they're dealing with is the biggest problem here, I think. So hopefully you learned something new about this and kind of got maybe a little more peace of mind to try and understand the story about what's happening a little bit better. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.